been doing my best to keep up with your broadcasts. You've been very prolific this week. You discovered mm -hmm. an important piece of evidence. A lot of people know that you and your son Trent have been separated for some time by legal yes. and other barriers, but Trent left you this contract of the covenant that you recovered from an old cell phone that you recently uh, reestablished. And Which is the reason why I don't have an eyebrow. Right, so you've shaved the eyebrow as sort of an informal uh, protest or, you know, until you are reunited with Trent, you're going to shave that eyebrow, correct? Yes, yes. And uh, so, like, you, you know this a lot better because I think you and I have kind of talked about it as friends, but uh, a few years ago, I, I took this contract to the FBI, and this picture was actually taken at the FBI. I took the picture of the contract before I handed it to him, so I had some evidence that I was there. So this picture is the evidence that I was at the FBI. So you know how you have been you know, very open about how you've communicated your difficulties with these people to the FBI, right? Yes. Uh, so on November 30th of 2015, when I was talking to my son about his mom's involvement in this cult, um, my son Trenton drew up this contract because he would come over weekend after weekend after weekend telling me the weirdest things I'd ever heard in my life. And I was like, finally, all right, if this happens, like I've heard in movies, they have a contract. He's like, yeah, it hangs on the wall in his mom's bedroom. And so I had him draw this. And shortly after I, I went to the FBI, I kind of dropped the phone, the screen broke, I wasn't able to access it anymore, and I had forgotten the code, and I couldn't get to the picture. And so because of, like a few months after I went and dropped it off, I couldn't get to the picture, I didn't have my evidence, and you can't exactly go to the FBI and subpoena the FBI for evidence that you didn't get a receipt for. So I couldn't get you, this you picture. You gave them the original, this, this drawing on the paper, is that right? I did, yeah, I, because I didn't want it. I, this thing, when, when Trenton gave it this to me, I, I, I was at a completely different point in my life. I was working at Nike. Right. I, I was a, a senior engineer working on the, the front end uh, cloud architecture for, for Nike.com. I, I wasn't a truther on YouTube. And right. so when, when I was a senior engineer at Nike, that's when Trenton started telling me about his mother's involvement in the secret society and he drew the contract and basically, like, I, I had to leave my job at Nike because, like, he told me even the guy that I worked with was there taking pictures of me and stuff, and it was Someone weird. Someone at Nike was involved. My, my son said a lot of people were involved in, in this whole thing. He, he outlined a whole huge network of how it worked, and I, it was ridiculous to hear at the time, but now mm -hmm. that I'm out here with you and we're doing this, it's all making sense. Right. Yeah, sometimes uh, things seem ridiculous at first blush, but when you start investigating, uh, yeah. you realize that there's something there. Now, Quinn, one of the things that jumps out at me right away on this uh, mm -hmm. contract that Trenton gave you is the imagery at the bottom. Now, of course, last week you and I were talking about Bob Crane and Richard Dawson, who was his co-star on Hogan's yeah. Heroes, and Dawson's wife, was it Diana Doors? Yeah, Diana Doors, yes. And yes, her she... affiliation with the uh, Process Church in the United Kingdom, which of course is related to the Zodiac Killer, and we've got these strange symbols at the bottom. Trenton drew these from memory? Yes, he did, He and I, I had him draw them several times just to make sure he wasn't making it up. Um, after he drew this contract, I was I, I was like, dude, I've never seen symbols like this. I mean, I know the, the triangle one, so the one with the dots, um, we're going to get into in a minute, because that's the one that I was able to connect, mm -hmm. the, the triangle one. Um, but the other ones, uh, I, I've had to research all kinds of codes. I even had some guy on the internet make a video about the contract saying he found some of these symbols in like an alien dictionary. What? Wow. Yeah. So... Uh, but the triangle symbol that you're looking at, that's uh, the second to the end on the right, uh, that symbol connects to the Aleister Crowley AA Society that you and I have been researching as part of the Process Church connection, the Bob Crane Church. They use the three dots as their AA. 
So, you know, if you go to like the Alistair Crowley Wikipedia page, you can find a link to it from there. You can, I can text it to you, but it goes, it's like Wikipedia A and then the three dots and then A and then the three dots. It's the, it's one of the symbols of their main societies. Yeah, that one. Huh. So you, you see that they use very similar symbology. So that three dots was one of the, the prime symbols that I, I was looking to relate to. Right so here. that's, yeah, that, that three dots for that. Uh, measure and, and the other the other things I followed were you know uh, various clues that Trenton gave me and um, how they use seals and and different things too. But it mostly came down to this contract and the only symbol that I could easily decode with any one hundred percent certainty is the use of that secret society and those three dots. Hmm. I and haven't heard a about this Alistair Crowley AA Society. Yeah, yeah, they're they're a big part of what we've been researching with the Jack Parsons and the the um, Alistair right. Crowley and the Scientology connections and you know. The, and, and just to keep people refreshed, Jack Parsons was a JPL scientist who was also an occult sort of. Uh, was he a Luciferian or a follower uh, of Alistair Crowley? It's not clearly. He was a direct disciple of Alistair Crowley with L. Ron Hubbard. So he was really high up in what's called the Agape Lodge of the time. And the Agape Lodge is where all the like all the stuff came out from England because Alistair Crowley was really big in the Agape Lodge in California. And he was really big in his operations of the OTO out of London, which is a lot of where the process church and all OTO, those OTO, that's the Order Templo Orientis or something like that? Yeah, yeah, the Order Templo Orientis. Uh-huh. And so, so these, the Agape this, Lodge, the, see, these things all just seem like, you know, friendly men's clubs or whatever on the surface. Yeah. Put on a fez and go have a good old time. But what is the Agape Lodge? Oh, there it uh, is. The Agape Lodge was what uh, Jack Parsons was heading up that was appointed to head up in Pasadena to start the occult practitioners in California. So this is where uh, Hollywood got its start in satanic practices. This is where like a lot of the directors would get involved and they would have uh, secret parties in famous people's houses in Pasadena and various locations in Hollywood. And, wow. And, uh, you know, L. Ron Hubbard stole Jack Parsons' wife, which was Sarah Northrup, you know, Northrop Grumman. Wow, did not realize that. Mm. The connections are unbelievable, unfeeking yeah. believable. Unfeeking believable. So, and and all of this research for me spawned from that contract that my son gave me and those three dots at the bottom. Wow. So the the part of the contract when I went to the FBI and that I keep repeating to people when I went to the FBI, the reason the FBI took the contract wasn't because of the words at the top because. You know, they said, you know, anyone can make that up. Um, right. But the one thing they said to me in that meeting is the symbols on that contract caused the agents that had interviewed me to focus enough on that where they wanted to take the contract. And they told me they had a special department that deals with these things. So it's like decrypting. This is a cipher, right? It's right. a cipher. Yes, exactly. It's a six key cipher of some hmm. kind. Drawn by an 11-year-old who didn't even know how to use the internet and couldn't even spell covenant. Wow. Wow. That's what, I, that's what I'm saying is this was drawn by an 11-year-old who can't even spell the words on the contract, but he knew enough about them. And he had stared at it enough to where he could draw the symbols repeatedly, but yet he wasn't a good enough speller to where he could spell any of the words the same way um, exactly. Well, I would say it seems rather obvious that he's inherited some of his father's artistic talent. I, I, I would say so. He's quite the little artist. Right. Um, I mean, the ability to draw is something either you have it or you don't. And at 11, yeah. that's pretty sophisticated drawing. Yeah. And so the, for me, the thing with the contract, when he drew that up, he had a very difficult time with it. But I also made sure that I wasn't in the room when he drew that to influence him. So... I, I don't know what he was going through when he drew that. I just know that he could draw those symbols repeatedly like he had seen them every day of his life, like it was, you know, something just normal to him. Right, right. Yeah, you I know? mean, that's, that's something. So, Quinn, now, obviously, naysayers, which you and I deal with plenty of them, 
would argue that you could have simply drawn this thing yourself. How can we satisfy that argument? Um, I, I, I can't. I, I left the contract that has my son's fingerprints on it with the FBI. That would be the only way that could validate that uh, I didn't do this myself, is you would have to do a handwriting match against my son, and you would have to do a, a fingerprint next to the letters, because the person who wrote that would obviously have their hand positioned next to the letters, that they would leave more fingerprints than a dad who just touched the edges. Got it. Right. Uh, so me on that contract, I, I made a conscious effort to do two things. I made a conscious effort to, one, not be in the room when he drew it, and I made a conscious effort not to put a fingerprint anywhere but an edge. Okay. So if the FBI runs a fingerprint analysis on it, they won't find my fingerprints anywhere that would have initiated me making it. So either I would have had to wear gloves, and that would mean there's no other Like Vince Foster there. writing a suicide note. <laughs> Well, so what I'm saying is, is you would have to do a, like you would have to do a criminal analysis on it for fingerprint and handwriting right. analysis uh, to be 100 percent sure. But for for us on YouTube, you know, for what we've been going through for the past year, you just look at what we've been going through with everybody that's been coming after us for researching these things. Right. And I'm playing devil's advocate, of course, asking yeah. that question. I don't yeah. expect that you would do that because although it is possible it doesn't seem to make sense as to why you would do that um, you know a lot of people say oh you know we're just doing this for the money but I think it's quite clear that you have skills and I have skills that if we were yeah. solely yeah. interested in money we could pursue other things that would involve much less public exposure and much less derision and as a programmer I make I would make more money doing other things sensible amount more like right. way more Yes. yes. I mean, saying I'm saying I'm doing this for money is like it's pretty silly. I, I, like I before I got involved in this, they had selected me to be on an elite team of three programmers to design Nike's next generation cloud platform. Right. So when you you compare the the playing fields of do I want to be on YouTube making creepy conspiracy videos that scare the crap out of people for literally no money, or do I want to be on Nike's elite cloud platform development team? setting the future for programming that I could make that other developers around the world might start using. I mean, but it, from it, our, our previous conversations and as you and I have gotten to know each other and become friends over the past year, I believe yeah. that you are motivated by the same things that I am, which is we look around and we say, hey, you know what, uh, rather than focusing on earning money, we want to get to the truth of these matters because there are criminals running the governments of the world 